Ladies and gentlemen, as we now commence with our proceedings, we'd like to invite our dignitaries to please join us at the ceremonial oil lamp as we would like to begin our annual sessions here this morning by ushering in blessings from above, signifying an auspicious start to our occasion. To do the honors of the traditional lamp lighting, I'd like to invite the following. Engineer Dr. Kamal Laksiri, President of the Institution of Engineers Sri Lanka for 2022-2023. We'd also like to invite our chief guest, Engineer Professor Malik Ranasinghe, Senior Professor in Civil Engineering at the University of Moratua and Chairman of the Information and Communication Technology Agency. We'd also like to invite our guest of honor, Ms. Renuka Virakon, Director General of the Board of Investment of Sri Lanka, our keynote speaker, Dr. Sanjeeva Viravarana, founder and CEO of WSO2. We'd also like to be joined by Engineer KPIU Dharmapala, Immediate Past President, the Institution of Engineers Sri Lanka for 2021-2022, one of the senior most past presidents of IESL. We'd like to be joined by Engineer Professor Ranjit Disanayaka, President-elect of IESL 2022-2023, Engineer Granny Jayalat, Vice President of IESL 2021-2022, Engineer P.W. Sarath, Vice President IESL for 2021-2022, Engineer Professor Udayanga Hemapala, Honorary Secretary IESL 2021-2022, Engineer Professor Chandana Gamage, Honorary Treasurer of IESL 2021-2022, Engineer Neil Abe Sekra, CEO, Executive Secretary of IESL. Engineer Anura Panditaratna, Deputy CEO, Deputy Executive Secretary of IESL. And we'd also like to invite a representative of the Honorary Life Fellows, as well as a representative of the Junior Inventor of the Year competition winners. On that note, may I now request our dignitaries to please do the honors of the traditional lamp lighting. <laughs>
dignitaries. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing as the following dignitaries now take their seats at the head table on stage. We'd like to invite on stage Engineer Dr. Kamal Laksari, President IESL for 2022-2023. Our chief guest, Engineer Professor Malik Rana Singha. Our guest of honor, Ms. Renuka Virkon. Our keynote speaker, Dr. Sanjeeva Virovarna. We'd also like to be joined by Engineer KPIU Dharmapala, Immediate Past President IESL for 2021-2022. Engineer Granny Jalat, Vice President of IESL for 2021-2022. Engineer Professor Ranjit Desanayaka, Vice President IESL 2021-2022. Engineer P.W. Sarath, Vice President IESL 2021-2022. Engineer Professor Udayanga Hemapala, Honorary Secretary, IESL 2021-2022. Engineer Professor Chandana Gamage, Honorary Treasurer, IESL 2021-2022. And we'd also like to be joined by Engineer Neil Abe Sekera, CEO, Executive Secretary of IESL. Ladies and gentlemen, as our dignitaries take their places at the head table, I request us all to please remain standing now for the National Anthem of Sri Lanka. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now witness the playing of the IESL theme song. This theme song was written by Mr. Bandula Nane Karavasam and it recaps the essence of engineering on our island, starting from the era of tanks and pagodas and progressing right up to the 21st century. So on that note, ladies and gentlemen, we now present before you the IESL theme song. Mai, Takina Asana Sivu Dino Mai, 
Well, on that note of celebrating engineering on our island, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and a very warm welcome to each of you to the 116th annual sessions of the Institution of Engineers, Sri Lanka. Ladies and gentlemen, as we commence with our proceedings here this morning, allow me to begin by giving you all a brief background to the Institution of Engineers, Sri Lanka. The Institution of Engineers Sri Lanka, or IESL as we more commonly know it, was established in 1906. And in the year 1968, the IESL was incorporated by an Act of Parliament. Today, it stands proud with a history of more than a century behind it. As many of you are aware, ladies and gentlemen, IESL is one of the oldest professional bodies in the whole of South Asia. And at present, it has on its roll over 25,000 members from almost all disciplines of engineering. IESL's vision is to be amongst the leading professional institutions in engineering and technology in the world. And it strives to achieve this bold vision by becoming the apex national body of engineers in Sri Lanka, which ensures internationally recognized as well as locally relevant standards, both in the professional practice as well as the education of engineering, while also actively supporting national development and diligently serving its members and the society at large. Now today, this morning, ladies and gentlemen, IESL marks its 116th annual sessions. And as all of you might agree, the annual sessions are a much looked forward to event in the engineering fraternity. Bringing together the members of the engineering profession, our annual sessions provide us all with an opportunity to gain new industry insights, as well as to celebrate the well-earned accomplishments of our fellow members. Talking about member accomplishments, ladies and gentlemen, as we begin with our agenda today, we would like to draw your attention to a very noteworthy initiative that is made possible by one of our members. If you look closely, you will notice there are some paper flowers that are integrated and interspersed as a part of our decor on the stage today. Now, these paper flowers are very special because these paper flowers are made of eco-friendly, biodegradable, recycled paper by cancer patients who are currently undergoing psychological counseling at the Apeksha Cancer Hospital in Maharagama. This initiative is thanks to the successful enterprise of one of our own engineers who has made these flowers bloom today. So at the very outset, we would like to appreciate this fellow member for this very significant and special undertaking. Well, on that note, ladies and gentlemen, we are now ready to commence the 116th annual session of IESL this morning. And to now officially begin by extending a warm welcome to each of you in the audience. We now have the official welcome address. To deliver the welcome address, it's my pleasure now to invite to the lectern the president of the Institution of Engineers Sri Lanka for the session 2022-2023. Ladies and gentlemen, let's put our hands together for engineer Dr. Kamal Laksiri. Thank you, Trishima. Hi, Bowen. Good morning to all of you. Chief Guest, Engineer Professor Malik Ranasinghe, Chairman, Information and Communication Technology Agency. Guest of Honor, Ms. Renukaim Virakon, Director General, Board of Investment of Sri Lanka. Madam. Keynote Speaker, Dr. Dr. Sanjeev Virawarna, Founder Chairman and CEO, WSO2 Group, other members of the head table, distinguished delegates from the uh, our regional engineering bodies who are joining online, Chairman of the Engineering Council of Sri Lanka, past President Engineer Tilak Disilwa, past presidents, council members, distinguished invitees, chapter chairmen, fellow engineers, students who are awarding today, and teachers and parents, staff of the ISL, and ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the Council of ISL, and as the acting president, I am honored to extend a warm welcome to all of you, especially our chief guest engineer, Professor Malik Ranasinghe, guest of honor, 
Mrs. Renukayam Veerakon, keynote speaker Dr. Sanjay Veeravarna, and attending the annual sessions of 2022-23. This is the 116th annual sessions of the ISL. Due to the pandemic situation that pre prevailed during the last two, three years, we could not conduct the event and we are having a physical event uh, uh, after two years. The annual sessions is a major event in the ISL calendar to mark the ceremonial inauguration of a new session comprising a new Council of Governors. Today, in this event, we also recognize award winners of different events conducted by the institution and also confer the life membership to members who have reached the life, life member status. Let me also take this opportunity to congratulate all the award winners and life members recipients for their achievements. The Institution of Engineers, since its formation in 1906, has evolved to the level of today with a membership of over 24,000 and more than 6,000 of them are chartered engineers and they are spread throughout the country and abroad as well. I am grateful to the members of this prestigious institution who placed their trust and COVID confidence on me and elected me as the president for the coming session 2022-23 and steer the institution through the challenges and to achieve its common goals and objectives. I would like to inform you that the well before assuming the office of presidency, I had to embark on the duties of president of IESL due to the unexpected absence of engineer Arjuna Manamperi, elected president for the session 21-22. I also take this opportunity to convey his best wishes and greetings of Engineer Arjuna Manamperi to all of you as requested by him. In spite of the numerous difficulties posed due to the COVID-19 pandemic, followed by the economic crisis situation experienced in the country, ISL could manage all its regular activities without interruption. Many events such as meetings and interviews were switched to virtual mode whenever possible. Now I would like to brief you on some of our salient achievements made in the last session. As the ex acting president, with the help and assistance of the council, standing committees, sectional committees, council appointed special committees, provincial and overseas chapters, we were able to work on the following areas amidst the difficulties faced throughout the session. Let me start. As we all agree, we engineers have a very important role in to play in the country's development drive. In this regard, ISL started to work with its sectional committees, the main pillars on which the institution is placed, to work on the long-term development strategy for different sectors such as energy, transportation, construction, IT, water and engineering education, etc., and to submit to the government. This submission is planned to be made under the National Engineering Conference of ISL to be held in the coming months. ISL has already submitted a plan for short-term strategies, suggesting immediate steps to be taken, mainly considering the current crisis situation. ISL is also presented in the high-level stakeholder representation committee appointed by the central bank. This We received this opportunity on a request made by us. ISL accepted the, uh, in honor of Dr. A.C. Visulingam, I want to mention it in this speech itself. We accepted the offer made by the veteran structural engineer, Dr. A.C. Visulingam, to donate rupees 25 million to IESL to meet the cost associated with an annual outstanding engineer award to be conferred under his name. IESL has already agreed with him on terms and condition of this offer and the formal agreement signing has been scheduled to this afternoon to mark, to coincide with the annual session. On behalf of the ISL, I take this opportunity to pay gratitude to Dr. Vishwalingam for his generous act. ISL also participated in the following national level issues with the government authorities and submitted our independent opinions, starting with Presidential Committee on LPG issue, on the proposed electric, electricity tariff structure, on the proposed reforms in the electricity sector, our sectional committees work on these areas and we have submitted our independent opinions to the relevant bodies in the government. 
and we will also start to work on draft long-term generation expansion plan 2023-2042, for which opinions have been called for recently. ISL continue to work on the Sydney Accord matter. We have already got the provisional membership and it is expected that the full membership will be granted in uh, due course. Uh, we expect this year, actually, in uh, October, the meetings are, uh, are being held uh, in IEA. So we have already fulfilled the stipulated requirements for the uh, Sydney uh, Accord. It's, it will facilitate ISL in recognizing three-year degree programs. We have already established the a Sydney Code Accreditation Manual. Long dragged technology stream issue has also been successfully solved and it has been decided to absorb them to the ISL umbrella and required bylaw changes are to be effected. During the session, ISL carried out accreditation and recognition of different engineering degree programs of several local universities. I also want to, want to mention here our annual flagship event junior invent of the year is to be recognized as a national level competition by the education authorities. It is a very happy news I want to announce here today. We are working with the Department of Education. I take this opportunity to thank Dr. Mulagam. I hope he is here today. We have invited him for his uh, support in this task. Action has also been initiated to expand our OCS chapter network to UK, Singapore, Canada and USA with the intention of connecting all our engineers living in those countries. Already, already the UK chapter formation is good progress. Our Vice President, Professor Ranjit Desanayake, was in UK recently and he had the initial discussions. Current ISL chapters, both foreign and local, were very active during the session on a new initiative, joint programs between foreign and local chapters were proposed. The objective of this Exercise is to enhance the interaction among the members in local and foreign chapters and also to share knowledge and experience. The first such joint program between the Queensland chapter of Australia and the local chapter Sabaragamo was conducted successfully, giving a great start to the program. Several other programs joining other chapters are being planned currently. Our Queensland chapter chairman, Engineer Dayanthi, is in the audience. I welcome you. So thank you for joining this session today. ISL successfully <coughs> confronted with the formation of alternative engineering institutions which are interfering with the ISL affairs. One such instance was the attempt to establish a separate building service engineers association of which the objectives and scopes were already covered under ISL and specific sectional committee. We have submitted our objections and closely following up the situation. ISL was also closely working with the CEDA in matters affecting the construction industry and some of the critical issues affecting this profession have been successfully addressed. We have also started to work with CEDA in establishing a building code for Sri Lanka, which has been discussing, discussing for many years. This I consider as a great opportunity we have got to take part in this uh, national task. We have also recently established, formed the Treasury Management Subcommittee uh, to look into the new avenues in managing ISL wealth in an optimum way, especially taking the current economic crisis, crisis situation in the country. A new forum named History and Heritage, Heritage Forum was also established to address the issues relevant to vast scope of ancient engineering. It is chaired by Professor Udaini Naogamo, council member. A new studio named Mavisuru Studio with modern audio video facilities was established at the headquarters to be used in our CPD activities. These are some of the achievements in the last session uh, with facing various difficulties, but we successfully managed. All these achievements were possible due to the tremendous support received from the council members, past presidents, chairman and members of sectional committees, standing committees, provincial chapters, district centers, overseas chapters, and the CEO, DS, and the staff of the IESL secretariat and the general membership. So I take this opportunity 
opportunity to express my deep appreciation to all of you for the support extended in the last session. Finally, with that introduction to the previous session, I look forward to another successful session ahead with the full support of all of you. Let me conclude my speech and warmly welcome all of you to the annual sessions again. Thank you very much. Thank you very much to engineer Dr. Kamal Laksari for warmly welcoming our audience as well as giving us an overview of the milestones and the accomplishments over the past term at IESL. Ladies and gentlemen, our annual session this morning is enriched by the presence of our guest of honor, Mrs. Renuka Virakorn, Director General of the Board of Investment of Sri Lanka. In a few minutes from now, it will be our pleasure to listen to our guest of honor address the gathering. Before that, may I now officially introduce our guest of honor to you. Ms. Renuka Virakorn is an attorney at law by profession, counting over 30 years of experience. She commenced her career as an instructing attorney with a leading law firm in Colombo. She's also a licensed notary public and commissioner for oaths. In addition, she holds a master's degree in business administration from the Postgraduate Institute of Management, University of Sri Jayawardenepura. Ms. Renuka Virakorn currently serves as a director general at the BOI. She previously held the post of executive director, heading investments and promotions. In her career at the BOI, spanning over 28 years, she has gained a wealth of experience and knowledge to facilitate activities of foreign direct, direct investment projects. She has worked in several key departments, including project implementation, monitoring and regional development, and has held the post of board secretary over a period of five years, concurrently with her other duties. Ms. Renuka Virakorn has also served as Director General Investment at the Presidential Secretariat. With that introduction, ladies and gentlemen, it's now our pleasure to invite our guest of honor to share her message with us this morning. Ladies and gentlemen, let's put our hands together for Mrs. Renuka Virakorn. Engineer Dr. Kamal Laksiri, President, Institution of Engineers, Sri Lanka. Chief Guest, Professor Malik Ramasinghe, Chairman, ICTA. Dr. Sanjeeva Virawarna, Founder and CEO, WSL2 Group. Members at the head table, IESL committee members, and members of IESL, distinguished guests. A very good morning to you all. I would first like to thank you for honoring me with the opportunity to address this distinguished gathering of engineering professionals at the inauguration of the 116th annual sessions of the IESL. At the outset, I must congratulate the IESL, one of the finest professional bodies with a rich heritage for the yeoman service rendered to Sri Lanka for well over a century. The Board of Investment is also fortunate to have had many talented engineers in service, both in the past and at present. The role of the engineer, especially with respect to the BOI and investment in general, is closer than one might ordinarily assume. Many of the landmark infrastructure projects and other significant foreign direct investment projects across diverse sectors, including manufacturing, hospitality, telecom, and ICT, have benefited from the expertise of Sri Lanka's significant engineering talent. In the telecommunications sector, for instance, Sri Lanka has been a leader in the region in terms of technological development, being the first to trial both 4G and 5G technology in this part of the world. You will agree with me that engineering strength has been the backbone behind each of these accolades and achievements. These achievements have greater significance given that we are a rel relatively small country 
achievements realized through the efforts of professionals such as yourselves. Regardless of its size, Sri Lanka's tech talent pool is known for its high-end product engineering experience, problem-solving skills, and ingenuity. From electric sports cars and eBay's middleware to powering the London Stock Exchange, Sri Lankan engineers are at the forefront of innovation. Your capabilities in providing world-class technological innovation has placed our IT industry at a significant position in the global IT value chain. As a country that is developing rapidly with demand for infrastructure growth to support the economy, Sri Lanka has been blessed with an engineering fraternity that has consistently delivered in terms of expertise and innovation. At this juncture in our nation's history, the value and demand for innovation can be considered critical to successfully overcoming the challenges of the present, as well as achieving Sri Lanka's ambitions for the future. Therefore, it is with pleasure that I note a part of today's proceedings will be dedicated to awarding prizes to school children competing for the Junior Inventor of the Year competition. It is indeed heartwarming to get a glimpse of the efforts of this August body, taking steps to encourage and lay the foundation for the next generation of our country's engineering talent pool. There are excellent career opportunities for engineering graduates in both state and private sector organizations, as well as many overseas employment opportunities and skilled migration opportunities. Engineering is certainly a part of Sri Lanka's talent pool that has greater demand than supply. I emphasize the word talent with purpose and intent given that talent is a key selling point for Sri Lanka when we as the BOI promote our country to the world and more specifically to the global investor community as a prospective investment destination. At this point, I wish to share an American investor's perspective of Sri Lanka and its talent where he went as far as to say that engineering is in our nation's DNA, which is the primary reason his company continues to thrive and expand its operations in Sri Lanka. It is with pride that we note that the numerous achievements of each professional body that validate our positioning of Sri Lanka's talent pool as one with remarkable potential, especially given the size of our country. In fact, it is collaboration between organizations such as the BOI and the IESL that creates a conducive ecosystem for investment. I'm sure that the sessions being held today will be fruitful and provide a platform for furthering Sri Lanka's capacity for providing ingenuity to the world. My best wishes to the president, the committee of the IESL, and those presenting papers at the technical sessions to follow. Thank you. Thank you very much to Mrs. Renuka Virukon for the very thoughtful message to our audience, appreciating the significant contribution made by our own engineers towards the development of our nation. Ladies and gentlemen, we are privileged this morning to also be joined by our keynote speaker, Dr. Sanjeeva Biravarana, founder and CEO of WSO2. Before his official address, may I now take this opportunity to introduce our keynote speaker to you. Dr. Sanjeeva Viravarana is a computer scientist, an entrepreneur, and an open source evangelist. He founded the Lanka Software Foundation in 2003 WSO2 in 2005, the Lanka Data Foundation in 2021, and Avinya Foundation in 2022. 
Dr. Sanjeeva is now dedicated to using software to make the world a better place, starting with Sri Lanka. With that introduction, it's now our pleasure to listen from our keynote speaker this morning. Ladies and gentlemen, let's now put our hands together for Dr. Sanjeeva Virovarana. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, good morning and uh, thank you so much for inviting me to be here. And uh, good morning to everybody. And I hope I can uh, talk to you a little bit about some things which are about the future of Sri Lanka, not about uh, what great things we've done in the past, but how we go forward. And uh, I just, uh, I'm going to warn you up front, I'm a very informal speaker. So I, I don't, uh, I will use a way of speaking that might annoy some people. I apologize in advance for that, but that's my style of speaking. So I hope I will, I hope you will understand what I'm trying to say. Uh, without uh, getting too stuck on my words. Um, okay. I have a few slides to use as well. Okay, thank you. All right, so I'm going to talk uh, uh, for a little bit about uh, how we are going to get Sri Lanka better. Um, I don't think, uh, it's not a surprise for anybody that you know we are in a bit of a problem right now, uh, a bit being very mild. And we didn't get to this problem in a short time. We got to this problem, you know, it's not uh, political alignment might say, well, it's last year, last two years, last three months. But if you look at our history from the time of independence to now, uh, we found a way to mess things up. I, I was speaking to a person from Singapore a couple of days ago. Uh, he wants to start a culinary school in Sri Lanka. And he was telling me that he's a Singaporean guy. And his the reason he wants to start that is, uh, he was inspired by, uh, you know, when, when Singapore started, Sri Lanka was way ahead of Singapore. Singapore, I think, got independence in 1965. And they, there's lots of stories about how Lee Kuan Yew said, Sri Lanka is an example of the path that we don't want to take. Right? And, and they ended up in a different position, uh, obviously. And uh, Philippines had been the same. Philippines had been far richer than Singapore at the time. And Singapore is much better off. Right? Um, so there's a lot of stuff that we, we have to do better if you're going to go get to a different path. And uh, it's an engineering process. Uh, and, and I use engineering in the, the broader sense of the word, not just in terms of what engineers will do, but it's a, it's a process of re-architecting, redesigning, and re-engineering Sri Lanka to a different path. And, and what does it take, really, right? So what, what's wrong with Sri Lanka? You know, why, why are we, why are we, why did we declare bankruptcy kind of unofficially in some un, unusual way three, six months ago? Why, why are we having uh, you know, all kinds of things, right? I, I don't need to go about it, uh, explaining what, what's going on. So fundamentally, uh, the reason we declare bankruptcy is because we spend more money than we have, right? It's like at home every day, every month, if you spend more money than you earn and you live on getting another loan and another loan to pay the bills, at some point that architecture doesn't work, right? Uh, you simply can't do that. Uh, and why, why are we spending more money than we have? Well, we have a lot of systemic problems in how we do things. We have a lot of corruption. We have a, a lot of inefficiencies in, in operational structures. We have a, you know, a lot of things that we do uh, because that's the way we used to do things. Or a lot of things that we do because that's how, that's how you know, somebody else did it. And, and so on, right? In order to get out of this, we need to do a few things, not too many things, but we need to do a few things right. First of all, we need to export more, right? Uh, we have the BOI uh, uh, Director General here. Uh, exporting is fundamentally critical because the world is deeply interconnected now. It is impossible to not import. Even though we should do local manufacturing of every possible thing, I'm, I'm a big proponent of that, and import substitution is a very good thing overall. At the same time, you can't manufacture anything anymore without importing something else, right? A lot of our foreign exchange spend is not, is actually, uh, I can't remember the word, it's input to manufacturing of various kinds. And so you can't, so in order for us to import, we need to get money to do that, we need to export. If we don't export, we have to borrow. And uh, this entire IMF agreement that we are working on and so on is just small numbers, right? And, and Sri Lanka's problem is, uh, on a grand scale, Sri Lanka's problem is nothing. It's just $50 billion or maybe $75, $80 billion, whatever, something in that range that we owe to everybody combined in the world, right? 
Ukraine in the last same period that we went to bankruptcy to now has got uh, 150, 200, 300 billion dollars of weapons delivered to them, right? So, so a, 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 you know, a, 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 the, the issue is not the amount of money. The amount of money, 50 billion dollars, is, is a funding round for a big company, right? There are, there are many investment companies that have that kind of balance sheets all the time. The, it's not the amount of money, but it's the way we have, we've run the system. So, uh, bottom line is we need to increase exports. We, we, are, we are short of, uh, I can't remember the exact number, I think like $3 billion a year, exports are short, uh, short of imports, something like that. Not, not, not a massive amount to get, get over the initial hump, right? Uh, we need to increase productivity. Uh, salaries in Sri Lanka are low relative to other countries. Why are salaries low? Because we produce less relative to other countries per person. And, and if you want to reduce some of the brain drain that we all know about, you have to increase productivity so we can have increased salaries and a better quality of life in Sri Lanka. And there are other aspects. It's not just the income, of course. People migrate to other countries for other reasons as well. And those, all of those have to improve. Uh, professionalism. Uh, it's very hard to, uh, and, and uh, don't, don't get this wrong, but it, it's hard to, uh, in Sri Lanka, when we do many of the engineering, uh, when we engineer anything, whether it's a building or a road or a, or, uh, or anything, uh, or, or, or if you look at uh, you know where the wires are laid on the ground or where the carpeting is done, we are not quite at the same quality you will see if it's done in the Middle East, right? If you go to Dubai and look at a building and look at how well aligned the tiles are in the bathroom, uh, it's better it's better aligned than here. Why? It's the same people who work there actually, right? The people who lay the tiles in Dubai are people from Sri Lanka, Pakistan, Bangladesh, India, you know, and so on for the most part. But yet, we are, the professionalism is missing to that level. Accountability. Uh, and accountability is not just government. People tend to blame all these things and what we are lacking is government and all the problems are in the government. I don't, I, I don't accept that at all because that's the easy way out. Uh, uh, corruption, you know, corruption is my, my number one of what we need less of. But corruption is a two-way street, right? Somebody must give, the other one must receive. Uh, I'm on the Chamber of Commerce Committee and I've, I've been pushing hard saying why can't we publish something saying okay nobody will participate in corruption because I was in some other meeting where the, the governor of the central bank and a bunch of other people are there and, and somebody I think it was the governor or someone else I can't remember said, look if, if you if private sector wants to complain about corruption the solution is simple stop giving right somebody has to give for somebody else to receive and, and there are, you know, and, and deal with it. Uh, when we, people don't want to deal with it, they find a way out, fast way out, and, and then blame the other guy saying that's the whole problem. So there's a lot of things, and, and we have a lot of systems. Uh, uh, I use the example of a tile uh, person who lays tiles, uh, or let's look at a plumber or an electrician. A, a, there was an article in the US recently about uh, um, electricians. Uh, electricians are not engineers, right? They don't have an engineering degree. Uh, they have, uh, I think in Sri Lanka, I think you need to have NVQ level four to be considered an electrician. I can't remember exactly, but may maybe maybe three, maybe four, maybe five, not more than that, right? Uh, a, a, and, and the article, the headline of the article, this is an LA Times article about two weeks ago, uh, was if you want to save the world, become an electrician. Why? It was about uh, uh, solar power, basically. And, and in the US right now, the number of electricians is reducing every year because people don't go into those jobs, right? And if you want to install solar power, it's great. We need engineers, but you also need the people who actually go and set it up at home, right? And we need thousands of those people in order to get power going at scale. And I don't mean just in Sri Lanka, but not, in the, not only in the US, everywhere in the world. So we have a lot of other people that need to work at a different level. And one of the problems in why that's not especially in Sri Lanka is because we don't look at professional, vocationally skilled people as professionals. A plumber is a professional. If your bathroom didn't work this morning, you couldn't be here, right? Or you could be here, but you have to go to somebody else's house and make it work. If your electricity didn't work, you know, different problems, right? So, so the things that we depend on to stand here or sit here or be here or to enjoy the air conditioning or the power or the sound, requires another group of people who are extremely professional about their job, right? For, the, for you to hear this without echo is a professional skill that 
we in sri lanka unfortunately don't respect to the same level in in the us if you if you go to a conference and somebody is managing sound those guys are called sound engineers right uh, they don't they don't have a de- degree to be called eng dot but they are called sound engineers because they engineer the sound so that you can hear properly right same thing is true about other areas so there there are a lot of things i think if we really want to change the country it's not about blaming a bunch of politicians saying we voted the wrong 225 in let's put a new 225 problem solved no it's not solved because it starts with all of us and doing doing a lot more right so now i'm going to i'm going to focus a little bit more on exports and and again come back to engineering because i think that is a the key a, a absolute key to growing sri lanka absolute key um so first of all a, so when you talk about exports there are two kinds of exports that that people usually talk about uh services and and merchandise in the export terminology but products in in the say engineering terminology we're making products service companies are great we have a lot of service companies but they have a limitation the scale is proportional to number of people right so uh, 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 and but but they're great right so so i mean in terms of it creates a job creates employment creates value and so on but the scale that a company can grow is proportional to number of people and the reality is we are not india we cannot have a company with 100000 software engineers or 100000 design engineers or 100000 something else right it, it it's silly to try to do that uh, sri lanka's yes we don't send enough people to university sri lanka sends somewhere between 10 to 12% of our population to university right uh, i think india is far less us is about 30% on average uh, the most developed country we send about 40% so even if you start sending the remaining 20% to university we don't have enough people to compete with india because 30% of india is you know much much larger than us right and and so the uh, services are great and as much as we can do services because it creates jobs it's wonderful but uh, an export oriented services even right uh, but it it doesn't give us uh, a, it gives a limited scale so you can calculate the total income sri lanka can make even if every single person in sri lanka was exporting services is 20 million people times how many thousand dollars a year it's not it's not a very large number that you're going to get to and obviously not everybody can produce services there are only 16 million adults of that there are a bunch of people who are retired so when you look at the number of employable age not everybody can be producing services outside we need the power and the electricity and so on so we're down to a very small number that can actually ex- do exportable services so it's not a scalable solution for us right we are a small country it's good i'm not saying it's a bad thing we should do it but it's not the exit strategy for sri lanka in terms of growth and coming out of the problems that we have in the country uh, i'm just going to explain one small thing i apologize most of you probably understand this but i'm going to use this to exp- my, for my next slide so just the the understanding the difference between how much you make in the company versus the value of the business if a company makes 100 million rupees a year that's their revenue they might have some expenses i mean they will have some expenses and they pay uh, that some part and then the l- l- remaining part is a profit right um that's your revenue and that's profit and expenses and so on the value of a company is basically how much somebody is willing to pay for the company to take the company over uh, so if you're if the company is public it's very easy because public means you have a number of shares you have say 10 million shares let's say each share is worth 2 rupees and 30 cents right then the company's market capitalization or value in some form is 23 million rupees 10 million times 2.3 right so uh, but if the company is private the value is a lot more amorphous thing you don't know how much it is it's really how much somebody is willing to pay for right another thing about private companies is that most companies first of all most companies that are started die within the first year 90% of all companies started die within the first year they don't make it beyond one year right that's a normal thing that's perfectly fine so you need lots of com- companies being started in order to get that 10% to survive and then out of that 10% only a certain percentage becomes larger and larger and so on uh, but the companies that grow and continue to do well uh the the there are three ways in which you can have a company continue one is you can continue to run the company as a private company right we see a lot of family companies in sri lanka Th- those are in that mode uh, uh my my most uh, uh you know the coolest example is perera and sons i assume there was somebody called perera at some point and and he started the company planned to give it to his sons not the daughters of course at that time daughters didn't get anything right the the business stuff uh 
So Pera gave it to his sons, and now I don't know, I'm assuming there's some, okay, it's not a public company, it's a private company, there must be somebody in that family chain that's running the company. And they've done really well, right? You get Pera and sons everywhere now. They franchi franchise it, they've come up with a great model, and they've done well. That's one way of running a company where it just keeps on running, and it generates profit uh, for the owners, and, and employ employees get a salary, and it, and it goes on, goes well. Um, that's one way. Another way is a company goes public. When a company goes public, basically it means any person in society can own shares of that company, right? And uh, other than for the ownership becoming more sort of democratized, uh, it's not different than the other companies. The third way a company, and, and it just goes on basically, but most companies that are started, 90% of them, more than 90% of them, don't go to either of those stages. Right? And I'm talking about the ones that survive. I'm not talking about the 90% that already died in the first year. Right? Of the remaining ones, 90% of them end up getting bought by another company. Right? That's, that's the exit, basically. That's called an exit then. You sell the company to somebody else for some amount of money. For what money? For the value that they are willing to pay. Right? And the difference between, uh, coming, going back to the previous page for a second about services versus products, service companies are valued somewhere between three quarter to two times their revenue typically, right? A, a product companies are valued anywhere from, you know, one to 50, 100 times their revenue, right? So that's the difference between the two value sides, okay? So uh, so now, a, a, uh, these are just some numbers I, I looked up uh, when I was making these slides. A, these are exits. These are companies that were bought by somebody else, right? In Israel, which by the way has a population of 9.7 million people, or 9.2 million people, uh, right? So less than half of Sri Lanka. In 2021, there were $82 billion worth of exits. So Israeli companies, I can't remember the number, I think it was 200, 171 MNAs, right, and IPOs. 171 companies produced $82 billion of exits in one year in a country half the size of Sri Lanka, right? That $82 billion is more than our total national debt in foreign currency. Uh, I'm not sure whether it's both currencies, but right? The previous year, uh, they had uh, about $15 billion in exits, right? And Israel has managed in that range $10 to $15 billion for the last five years, each year. Right? So 2019, it says 21 billion. Okay, every year. Uh, uh, I looked up Ireland as well, because Ireland has only 5 million people, 4.995 million according to Google. Right? Quarter of Sri Lanka. They had last year a $1.6 billion of capital raised into the country. These are tech startups only I'm talking about. Right? Tech means the ones that are typically done by engineering, and it's not only only, only software, right? The, the, uh, 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 there was a comment earlier about the IT industry. It's not only about IT. It's about anything done with technology, engineering, you know, all kinds of things. Uh, recently, there was a story. There was a Sri Lankan professor in Melbourne somewhere. Uh, he had a, uh, had a startup that Pfizer, I think, bought for about $180 million, right? Uh, it was about two weeks ago that story came out, or a month ago. Um, so this is value. Right. There are companies that can be sold for a billion dollars whose revenue is only $20 million, 50 times revenue, right? So value is what will drive income to the country in a meaningful way, right? This value goes to shareholders, so it matters who the shareholders are, so it is important Sri Lankans are shareholders. Because if Sri Lankans are not shareholders, the money will only go outside. As long as there are Sri Lankans who are shareholders, whether they're employees or the people who started the company or the people who invested in the company, that money will come to the country, right? So the opportunity for creating real value is massive, right? And, and the numbers are, the problems that we are talking about dealing with, I think BOI announced recently this year, we're gonna have 1.5 billion, already we have 1.5 billion in investments, we're expecting 2 billion or something, I can't remember the exact number, right? Uh, and for many years, we have been trying to get to saying we get more than $2 billion of uh, investment coming into the country. That's across all sectors. That's across tourism. Sri Lanka was the world's number one destination for tourism in 2019 in every magazine. 
right? Of course, we had the April 2019 bombings that destroyed the country, and of course, after that, we had uh, the pandemic that took us out, right? So tourism's taken a you know shot to its face multiple times for the last uh, three years, slowly recovering. Uh, so that's including tourism investments, less than 1.5 billion dollars a year, right? So we have a lot of opportunity that engineers can have a significant impact on. But it won't happen by doing things the way we've done before, right? Because it hasn't happened. If it was going to happen the way we do things before, it should have happened by now. Where is it? It's not there. So we have to do something significantly different if you're going to try to make a meaningful change in the trajectory of the country, right? So just to know where we are, to the best of my knowledge, we've only had two software exits, uh, tech exits, in the history of the company, and probably a few more that I'm not aware of, but they're certainly not large ones, right? This is the history of the tech industry in Sri Lanka. It's not one year. It's $45 million, let's, let's be generous, say $100 million in the history, right? Sri Lanka is twice the size of Israel in terms of number of people. We are four times the size of Ireland in terms of number of people, right? We have more engineers in Sri Lanka than there are in Ireland. We have more engineers in, in Sri Lanka than, uh, than, I'm not sure about Israel, because Israel probably has a higher university percentage than Sri Lanka, so they may be having more, right? Uh, we, we do have some great companies in the works. I'm going to identify two companies, and I know there are others that I'm not aware of. Four Axis Solutions is a company that was started by four students uh, from, uh, uh, okay, both the ones I'm going to use are from Morito University, but there's nothing to do with Morito. There are many other great companies from other universities, just to be very, very clear. And Prof. Malik is in there, but uh, uh, Four Axis Solutions was started by four students uh, while they were undergrads, and they, they now make, uh, they're actually an app company. They, they, they don't make random apps. So random app company means you're a services company. They have an app that is used for adult coloring. You remember those things that you give children, right? When they're, you know, give a box of crayons and, and a picture to color, right? You, you go to, uh, you know, you have those books at home. This is an app for that. And they are, they are one or two, number one or number two rated in, in each of the app stores in US, UK, and the various countries for that. Produced in Sri Lanka. They make multiple million dollars of revenue, about 15 to 20 people in the company, massively profitable. Right, because and they don't need any funding, and and their vision is to take on Adobe. Right, there are a bunch of engineers, just young kids. Their vision is to take on Adobe. If you don't know who Adobe is, Adobe is one of the world's largest software companies, and they have fantastic software in the in the space of creativity, design tools, and so forth. And they are going to take those guys on. Right, uh, Paracum Networks uh, is a, is a electronic startup. Uh, they have it's a networking, it's a telco grade networking infrastructure company. And uh, product is, you know, same same quality as something you buy from Nokia or from Siemens or uh, what are the telco infrastructure companies, right? Uh, uh, Sri Lankan product, Sri Lankan company. So so we do have some companies in the works, and there are there are plenty of others. And I apologize, I'm not uh, discriminating against these only ones that I, I just came to mind when I was doing this. There are many companies like this that are coming up that are able to deliver some of that crazy multiples that we're talking about. Right? That is what it takes to change Sri Lanka. But we need more of this. Right? So why are we not like Israel or Ireland? What's the problem? So really, the problem eventually comes down to all of us. Right? Everybody has to ask, why, what, what can I do as an individual? What can IESL as an organization do to help change the trajectory of the country? Right? And it won't happen by just doing the same thing. Whatever we've been doing for the last 75 years, on, right, since independence, isn't hasn't worked, right? The general tagline now is, uh, pe people from my generation and above have failed the country is the way other generation talks about it now. And they are trying to save the country, right? Which is true, right? Because our generations have not delivered what Sri Lanka needs to be. And in Serbia, giving them a bankrupt country. So now start from the bottom. So the one thing is you can say, well, this is Sri Lankans. You know, we are not that good. We are not like Israel is not like Irish or whatever. But that's nonsense. This, this is actually old data, but it was tweeted out just yesterday. I just saw this on Twitter. Um, but it's based on 2013 to 2015 data. But I have 100% certain the numbers are just bigger, but the rough range is correct. This is the median household, household income in the US by ethnic group, right? And Sri Lankan Americans show up as number four. Right? So when, when we go to the US, we are good. So what does that say? All the good guys have gone, we have all the dumbos left. 
I don't accept that. I don't think any of you guys accept that, right? There are plenty of perfectly capable people here in Sri Lanka. It's not that the good guys have all left and the, the people who can't do something are left, right? Absolutely not. We have plenty of people to have plenty of good people outside and plenty of good people here. Personally, I want to export 5 million people from Sri Lanka. I want to reduce the population down to 15 million. We have too many people. I know it's not a popular position, but that's okay, right? Because we have enough good people to export to all kinds of places and build a diaspora. Diaspora is a bad word in Sri Lanka. Diaspora should be a great word. The reason Israel succeeds is because of its diaspora. The reason Ireland succeeds is because of its diaspora. Right? It should be a word we embrace, not annoy people with. Uh, so we are, we are, we've done well. Actually, if you look at the, the small table, you probably can't see it. It talks about the percentage of people going to university. The average in the US at the time was 28%. Average for Indian Americans was 70%. Right? So 70% of Indian Americans go to the US. 28% of uh, uh, US average is 28%. Uh, that means if you break it down uh, into these ethnic areas, it'll be even lower. Right? So Sri Lankans are not the problem. It's not that we can't do it, or we can't compete with the Israelis, or the Irish, or the whatever you call them things. It doesn't matter. right? So one question people ask is, are we investing enough in R&D? My view is yes. I've been on, on boards of a bunch of organizations over the last 10 years, uh, boards of various governing bodies. I think we do, but we're doing it the wrong place. Right? Because we invest money into R&D, into buildings. When's the last time building produced some product or some research or some innovation? Right? Building is just a damn expense. You have to keep the lights on, keep the AC running, you have to paint it, you have to fix the flow, fix the water leak, right? Everything. So, but, but we, uh, uh, I was on the board of Slintech for three years. Uh, uh, they, they, they know I complain about this. So, uh, Slintech has spent more than 10 billion on building buildings. Right? Public money. We haven't produced 10 billion worth of returns. But we have great buildings. But the buildings are not going to change Sri Lanka. Change has to come from people. So part of the problem with the R&D agenda in Sri Lanka is we don't pay the people who do research. Uh, uh, when I was on the RC Clark board, this is about 10 years ago, I think. At the time, there were uh, some 60, 70, 80 open engineer jobs in ACC, open cadre positions that were not filled. I you know why? The salary they were offering was 28,000 rupees a month. So how are you going to get somebody to work in you know, Arthur C. Clarke Center. Arthur C. Clarke is Sri Lanka's biggest brand. It's, it's even bigger than Ceylon Tea because everybody in the world knows Arthur C. Clarke. Right? So you want to work in the Arthur C. Clarke Center for Modern Technology. It's a great tagline on your resume to say I work there. But you can't do that for 28,000 rupees a month. Right? We're not paying people enough to do those things. So government R&D expenditure needs to be inverted. Say no more buildings, no buildings. Work from home. That's what we did for the last two years. It did okay, right? And just give the money to people instead. Pay people better. That'll work a lot better. Uh, let's look at AI for a second. Uh, um, uh, we, we have some competitive advantages, right? Unfortunately, many of our leading industries competitive advantage is low cost. Apparel is our largest leading uh, industry, right? I think about six billion that they're gonna produce this year. Uh, it's not fair to say it's only low cost, but low cost is a factor in why apparel uh, is booming in Sri Lanka. But still, Sri Lanka's apparel sector is very small compared to Bangladesh. I think Bangladesh started after us. We produced six billion this year, we were about four. We, I think we are expecting to produce six billion. Bangladesh is about 45 billion a year, just in apparel, right? Uh, so uh, what, uh, we have various competitive advantages. We have a highly educated population in general and so on. AI is in a, in a crazy situation right now, artificial intelligence, right? This is, a, uh, this is a graph that this guy called Tim Urban, he writes amazing blogs. If you want to read, if you go to this, if you look for Wait But Why, uh, that's a website that he has. It's incredibly thought through, deep, deep content. Um, so if you look at human progress through time, we've been progressing over time, but we're kind of on the cusp of just exponential progress. And that's driven by artificial intelligence. Let me give a crazy example. If you go right now to this website called podcast.ai, you can, you can hear an interview with Steve Jobs, except the entire interview is AI generated. So you're talking to a dead man, basically. So we're now at the point where anybody whose personality, information, position is enough on the internet, enough on the internet, after you're dead, somebody can talk to you. 
because the intelligence will learn from the internet what your what you would have answered i mean just please listen to this spend the first 5 minutes uh, steve jobs had interesting views about religion right? and he 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 anyway i'm not going to give it away uh, and this one this ai this engine is answering as steve jobs in the voice of steve jobs it's slightly higher than steve jobs himself but in the voice of steve jobs sorry uh, and saying giving answers right and you know if it's he, he has children he has he has a wife you know those people listen to it, it's like this is steve this is not somebody else right except it's all artificial so this is going to be true for everybody not just steve jobs in a few years because all our data is on the phone it's on the internet right you've given a speech it goes on the internet you got your voice i think they it only needs like 3 seconds of voice to be able to mimic your voice now in software right so 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 uh, just just imagine if you can bring a dead man basically alive right you could have something where somebody has a phone number you call the number steve jobs answers except is ai but it's steve jobs because you're getting his views coming through that right that's the path that we are on with ai uh, there are so many other things with ai that are tremendously going to challenge anything with engineering anything with everything is going to get challenged we are on that cusp of taking off and when we take off if we are doing things the old way it won't work we need to think ahead we need to be different and look ahead it's not about national ai policy none of that stuff it's about individuals right it's not about the government doing something it's about individuals what are you going to do what am i going to do that is what matters right again uh, i think this is my last slide uh, isl as an entity as an organization 100 plus year history fantastic history lots of amazing stuff but it's people not buildings right it's not the institution that does anything it's the individuals of the institution you people like you guys are the members of the institution the participants are the ones who will do something not the institution as an entity entity has no life of its own legally it does but not in other ways right so if you want to make sri lanka better engineers are going to have to change gears significantly and become a lot more entrepreneurial a lot more problem solving a lot more out there than we've been for the last 75 years and do more of what we need to do and less of what we don't need to do otherwise we might have fuel for the next few years and you know sri lanka is strategic enough that we're not going to go to hell right because sri lanka is strategic enough for enough people they can't allow sri lanka go completely to the bottom so we'll be okay but it won't be what we can be which would be a tragedy be a tragedy that we are leaving for our next generation and the next generation and beyond thank you very much thank you very much to our keynote speaker dr sanjeeva veeravarana for that very thought provoking presentation on engineering a better future for sri lanka i'm sure that provided all with with great food for thought and we're very appreciative of dr sanjeeva veeravarana's presence as our keynote speaker here this morning Ladies and gentlemen it's indeed a deep honor that our annual sessions have been graced by the presence of our chief guest engineer professor Malik Rana Singha who is senior professor in civil engineering at the University of Morotua and the chairman of the Information and Communication Technology Agency please allow me now to officially introduce our chief guest to you professor Malik Rana Singha is a chartered engineer international professional engineer fellow of the institution of engineer sri lanka fellow of the national academy of sciences sri lanka and fellow of the institute of project managers sri lanka he is also an independent non executive director of access engineering plc resus energy plc tj lanka plc and united motors lanka plc Professor Rana Singha is a former vice chancellor of the University of Morotua and a former chairman of the Sampath Bank PLC. He's a former commission member of the University Grants Commission, former council member of the National Research Council and former dean of the Faculty of Engineering at the University of Morotua. 
Professor Rana Singha graduated in civil engineering from the University of Moratua and obtained his MSc and PhD from the University of British Columbia, Vancouver, Canada in civil engineering economics as a Canadian Commonwealth scholar. Professor Rana Singha's research focus is to combine civil engineering economics and environmental economics with project management. He has published over 130 research publications, of which over 70 are internationally referred publications. His Hirsch Index for research publications is 18. With that introduction, ladies and gentlemen, we now have the privilege of listening to our chief guests, esteemed thoughts on this occasion. Ladies and gentlemen, let's now put our hands together as we welcome Engineer Professor Malik Rana Singha. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Engineer Dr. Kamal Laksiri, Acting President and President-elect IESL, Mrs. Renuka Virakun, Director General of BOI, and our guest of honor, Dr. Sanjeev Virwarna, Founder Chairman and CEO of WSO2, and our keynote speaker, members of the head table, past presidents, and members of the IESL Council, fellows, and members of IESL, distinguished invitees, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for inviting me to be the chief guest at the 116th annual sessions of the Institution of Engineers, Sri Lanka. As a fellow, I'm extremely honored, and it gives me a great pleasure to extend my best wishes to IESL on this occasion. The mission of IESL is said to be to ensure standards of professional practice and education in engineering are locally relevant and internationally recognized. This is a great responsibility, as Sanjeev has just highlighted, as it as it is accepted that engineers, more than any other profession, create wealth for a nation using their expertise. Sound education in engineering is the cornerstone through which our engineering expertise can be developed. At a time when our nation needs to create wealth rapidly, it's essential that IESL play the pivotal role in ensuring that education in engineering and engineering technology meet the expectations of our people and our society. And what right, Sanjeeva rightfully did was to question whether we have done that. In my brief address today, I would like to explore the role of IESL as the apex authority responsible for ensuring that education in engineering meets the required standards. I take this opportunity to commend and express our gratitude to IESL for the far-reaching initiative taken in obtaining membership in both Washington Accord and the Sydney Accord to accredit education engineer, engineers and engineering technologists. By these initiatives, IESL has brought international recognition to education in engineering. Hence, the recognition and accreditation of our engineers, our engineering and engineering technology degree programs by IESL should no longer be a clubby matter, but a true and honest evaluation in terms of international expectations, as it is. We often hear and read statements made by eminent people on the need to modernize the curricula of our degree programs in Sri Lanka to meet the expectations of employers and industry. Sometimes these are repeated as mantras without studying the reality. I chair the Committee of P on People Development at the Ceylon Chamber of Commerce. At the last meeting, an eminent corporate personality also made this statement. I took the opportunity to very diplomatically inform him of the reality. Having chaired the Standing Committee on Engineering Education at the UGC for nearly five years, I can state that the curricula of all the IESL recognized engineering degree programs at our state universities are up to date. And I believe the academic staff members are capable of keeping their curricula current without anybody asking them to. Then what is the role of IESL in engineering education? As Professor Tim Eber, the chairman of the UK Joint Board of Moderators, 
representing the Institute of, Institution of Engineers, Civil Engineers UK, and the former external examiner for civil engineering degree program at the University of Moratua, stated that in quote, in his opinion, the role of DICB or the Department Industry Consultative Board is to make the brave suggestions to the departments about what to remove from degree programs in order to make space to allow new additions. Now, this is a question very relevant because Sanjeev also questioned if when you really think, are we training our engineers to what is needed or are we sticking to what we already know? And he said the agenda of the DICB should be about subject specific subtractions from the program, which are always needed to give to be given, give all the additions that we have to make. Suggesting subtractions require experience and vision, which is precisely the attributes represented on DICB. I, I, cl I close the quote. Similarly, I believe providing leadership to make the brave suggestions on what to remove from degree programs based on your experience and mission to make space to allow new additions is one of the key roles of the IESL for education engineering. Unless we are brave enough to do that, then we would be still talking about the same old degrees that we have, not really looking at what needs to be done for the future. I remember around 2003, when the three deans of faculties of engineering at Morotua, Peradeni and Ruhuna managed to convince the then executive secretary of IESL, Mr. Russell De Silva, on the need for IESL to become a signatory to the Washington Accord. When I saw how seriously my own department of civil engineering took the Washington Accord accreditation process last year, and the improvements that we achieved with the preparation, I realized that our initiative taken back then to bring education in engineering to international standards was justified. The second key role is ensuring that many opportunities possible are available to students to obtain good education in engineering. I believe that for our country to prosper, as highlighted by Sanjeev again, we have to train large numbers of qualified engineers and technologists, irrespective of whether there are immediate employment opportunities in Sri Lanka or whether they are trained in the state or non-state sector. I fully support the requirement of minimum qualifications to commence education in engineering and uphold and uphold in the required standards of the programs. However, the opportunity for education in engineering should be a right for all, not a privilege for some. As the arbitrator of the suitability of programs to deliver education in both engineering and engineering technology in Sri Lanka, IES, IESL must always approach evaluation with the objective of providing more opportunities to all students who desire the edu education by helping and guiding the study programs to meet our expectations. So it's, it's, a, it's a big responsibility that IESL has, because that's the main mission of IESL. Ladies and gentlemen, till recently, as we all know, a majority of A-level students, especially those in the rural areas, had no option other than arts and humanities streams. About 10 years ago, a new window called technology stream was introduced to the A-levels to provide these students with opportunities to enter university in fields with better employment opportunities. My own village school occasionally sent somebody to the, uh, to the arts faculty. But when the technology stream was introduced, in the very, very first year, we admitted 18 students from a very rural school went, simply because the priest in that area managed to co convince the director of the zonal education to place the technology lab in that school. Today, every year, over 10 to 12 students go for the technology stream. Today, 12 state universities offer degree programs to these students in, in three areas of study, as we know, mainly the engineering technology. At the inception of the technology stream, the University Grants Commission stipulated that all engineering degree programs should be accredited by the IESL in compliance with the Sydney Accord. And that's the only degree program where the, where the UGC book 
very clearly states that the professional body should accredit and according to Sydney record. Even when we put that, there was a lot of objections saying, why are you specifying a professional body? We said, unless we do that, the standards might not be to the level that we want. Since it, since it was a request from the UGC, the UGC also agreed to pay up to five years of the annual cost incurred by IESL in obtaining the Sydney Accord membership. I believe 2022 is the last year of that offer. I must take this opportunity to gratefully acknowledge the five presidents of IESL during that era. Dr. S. B. Vijaykorn, Mr. Vimal Siri Gamage, Mr. Jayavilla Meghwada, Prof. Mrs. Niranjali Ratnayaka, and Prof. Manoj Pallevat, who worked very closely with the UGC to, to ensure that the engineering te technology degree programs offered by state universities achieve the standards expected by IESL for accreditation. I consider that decision to be an historic opportunity for IESL to unify and lead the key trades in engineering profession. I was very happy to hear when the president mentioned that this issue that has been long standing about the membership has been finally solved. Thank you very much. In conclusion, as an academic in engineering, I believe it is imperative that IESL continue to provide leadership for and be engaged constructively in development of education in engineering to ensure that its members, whether trained in state or non-state sector, have the necessary skills, training and capabilities to meet the expectations of our society and our people that very clearly articulated by Sanjeeva this morning. I congratulate the President and the Governing Council of IESL for the, for the many remarkable achievements during the 116th year. I wish our institution the very best in all your future endeavors. Thank you very much. Thank you very much to engineer Professor Malik Rana Singha for sharing your message with us this morning and also highlighting the need for all of us to rethink whether our education in engineering in this country truly meets the required standards. On that note, ladies and gentlemen, it's now time for us to move on to the next item on the agenda, a special highlight of this morning, I have to say, because these are the presentation of awards and certificates this morning honoring the seasoned members of our fraternity, as well as recognizing the trailblazing engineers amidst us for their outstanding performance. Now, we'd like to begin with the award of Honorary Life Membership to Senior Members. The Honorary Life Membership is awarded to corporate members, companions and associates who have completed 40 years of membership continuously and those who are about 60 years of age. They will be exempted from paying annual subscription fees from next year onwards and will continue to enjoy all the facilities and benefits extended to other members of their class. The members receiving honorary life membership will now be presented with a certificate. To present these certificates, may I invite our chief guest, Engineer Professor Malik Ranasingha, to join us, accompanied by Engineer KPIU Dharmapala, Immediate Past President IESL for 2021-2022, and Engineer Dr. Kamal Laksiri, President of IESL for 2022-2023. Let's put our hands together as we have the award presenters joining us. On that note, I do hope we have our honorary life fellows ready to now accept their certificates. I will read out the list. Fellows receiving honorary life membership. We'd like to begin with engineer WWKL Mendes. Let's put our hands together, ladies and gentlemen. We'd like to invite all of the honorary life fellows to please join us as we will move in quick succession. Next up, we would like to be joined by engineer Pial Hemantha Ganepola. Joining us next, we will have engineer JWMLC Simon. Let's put our hands together, ladies and gentlemen, for our honorary life fellows. Our 
Our next recipient, Engineer MJS Silveria. Let's put our hands together for him. We have Engineer MJS Silvera joining us on stage. Next up, Engineer DM Aberatna. Let's put our hands together. Honorary Life Fellow. Joining us right after this, we have Engineer MJP Kulatunga. A loud round of applause for him. Joining right after this, we have Engineer S.A. Gunasekara. Our next honorary life fellow to join us up will be Engineer H.A. Karunasena. Joining us right up next is Engineer Captain E-R-A-R-N Gunasingha. Congratulations. Our next honorary life fellow is Engineer W.W.M.S. Mendes. Joining us right after this, we will then have Engineer A.C. Yapa. We have a few more honorary life fellows to recognize. Our next honorary life fellow is Engineer M.I. Jaffer. Joining next, we will have Engineer N.N. Kamaladasa. Our next honorary life fellow is Engineer C.J.D. Pereira. Our next honorary life fellow to join us is Engineer B.H.T. Kulasekara. And the final honorary life fellow we are recognizing today, Engineer L.W. Seneviratna. So these are all of the honorary life fellows, ladies and gentlemen, the final one on the list right now. Can we please put our hands together for all of the honorary life fellows here at IESL? On that note, we would like to say thank you very much to our presentation party. We will now move on to the next certification. We'd like to request our Certification party to please be seated. We'd like to say thank you to our chief guest, Engineer Professor Malik Rana Singha, as well as Engineer KP Ayu Dharmapala and Engineer Dr. Kamal Laksari. Please take your seats. We now move on, ladies and gentlemen, to honorary life members elected for 2020-2021 and 2021-2022. To present this segment of certificates, I'd like to invite our guest of honor, Mrs. Renuka Virakon, accompanied by Engineer KP Ayu Dharmapala, immediate past president for IESL for 2021-2022, and Engineer Granny Jalat, vice president IESL for 2021-2022. Let's put our hands together as we have the award presenters joining us up. So we're now moving, ladies and gentlemen, into honorary life membership for the members. Let's get started. We have Engineer SDGR Sandanaika. Congratulations. We have engineer SDGR Sandanaika joining us up, being recognized as an honorary life member. Congratulations. Next up, we will be joined by engineer R.I. Senaratna. Let's put our hands together, ladies and gentlemen. 
Joining next after this, Engineer GGM Vijay Tilaka. Our next honorary life member will be Engineer H.P.R. Gunawardhana. Joining right after this, we will then be joined by Engineer R.M. Ananda Senarath. Our next honorary life member is Engineer L.P.G. Silva. The next honorary life member is Engineer KRPM Mulle Gamgoda. We will then be joined by Engineer GA Dayaratna. Joining us next, we have Engineer S.K. Vijaytunga. Our next honorary life member is Engineer D.G.C. Ratnapala. Next up, we have Engineer DGC Ratnapala. And joining us right after that, Engineer DGA Abegunavardhana. Let's put our hands together, ladies and gentlemen. Joining next, we'll have Engineer Viraj Fernando. This is Engineer Viraj Fernando joining us now. We move on, Engineer VK Manatunga. Joining after that, we have Engineer BSM Pires. Engineer NRR Jayasekara. Next up, 
Engineer L. T. R. Bambaravana. Do we have Engineer B. S. M. Pires with us? We right now have Engineer L. T. R. Bambaravana, and after this, we will have Engineer B. S. M. Pires. Let's put our hands together, ladies and gentlemen, honorary life members. We then move on, Engineer Y. M. Sisiraratna. Let's put our hands together for our honorary life member. Joining next up, Engineer N. P. S. Karma Ratna. Next up, Engineer D. S. Samarakorn. Our next honorary life member, Engineer D. P. Jayakodi. Next up, we will be joined by Engineer N. A. De Silva. Our next honorary life member will be Engineer G. H. L. Kumarasiri. Joining next, we have Engineer D. Mallika Arachi. We also have an honorary life associate that we would now like to recognize, Major M. J. A. Vaughan Gunster. Let's put our hands together, ladies and gentlemen, honorary life associate. And with that, we come to the end of this segment. We'd like to say thank you very much to the presentation party. You may please take your seats now. Thank you very much to our guest of honor. Thank you very much, Engineer K.P. Ayu Dharmapala. And thank you very much, Engineer Granny Jayalat. We will now move on to the awarding of fellow certificates. To present this set of awards, I'd like to invite our keynote speaker, Dr. Sanjeeva Veeravarana, accompanied by Engineer K.P. Ayu Dharmapala, immediate past president of IESL for 2021-2022, and Engineer Professor Ranjit Disanayaka, vice president IESL for 2021-2022. May we invite our keynote speaker, Dr. Sanjeeva Veeravarana, Engineer K.P. Ayu Dharmapala, and Engineer Professor Ranjit Disanayaka to now join us. This is the awarding of fellow certificates, ladies and gentlemen. Corporate members who have been elected as fellows are now awarded with their certificates. And a fellow is a member having sufficient experience of a nature acceptable to the council, involving at least five years of responsibility in engineering, superior to that required of membership. So with that, let's now get ready to recognize our fellows elected for 2020-2021 as well as 2021-2022. We start off with Engineer Lieutenant Colonel K. D. Senaratna. Let's put our hands together for her. Joining us up next, Engineer P. M. Amarasekara. Our next fellow elected for the ses session is Engineer Dr. S. J. Vidana Patiranage. Joining us up next will be Engineer S. P. S. Martino. Our next fellow to be recognized is Engineer WTDP Patmendra. Up next, we have Engineer D. Abe Sirivardhana.
Joining up next, Engineer D R N Jayasurya. Our next fellow to be recognized, Engineer R S K Trimavitana. Joining us next, we have Engineer NGD Vijay Sirivardhana. Up next, Engineer A.G. De Silva. Our next fellow to be recognized, Engineer D.L.B.P. Vijay Sekara. Joining us up next, Engineer DMLU Bandara. Our next fellow is Engineer KPW Asiri Indika. Joining us next, Engineer HM Jayaratna. Our next fellow to be recognized, Engineer T.S. Godakumura. Up next, we will have Engineer H.D.B.P. Herat. Joining next, we have Engineer W.A.R.A. Priyanta. Our next fellow to be recognized, Engineer P.R.S. Chandra Kumara. Up next, Engineer A.C.R. Galapattige. Our next fellow to be recognized, Engineer V.B. Vijaykorn. Up next, we will be joined by Engineer N.S. Vettasinghe. Our next fellow to be recognized, Engineer S.D.G.R. Sandanayaka. Up next, we have Engineer Dr. T.U. Leonage. Joining us up next will be Engineer P. Kalubovila. Our next fellow to be recognized, Engineer P. L. W. Rathnayaka. Joining next, Engineer Dr. L. C. K. Leonage. Our next fellow to be recognized, Engineer H. M. A. M. Herath. Joining next, after that, we will have Engineer D. M. D. O. K. Desanayaka. Our next recipient, Engineer P.A.G. Gunatilaka. Joining us up next, Engineer M.K.J. Prabodhini. Our next recipient, Engineer D.S. Bogahavatta. We have the last few fellows to be recognized. Up next, Engineer K.M.D.P.B. 
Kangara. And joining right after that, we have engineer A.W. Gamage. And the final fellow to be recognized on this list, we have engineer Z.T.M. Fuzzly. Let's put our hands together, ladies and gentlemen. This is our final recipient for the fellows selected for the session 2020-2021 and 2021-2022. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, a huge round of applause for all of the fellows who have been recognized today. And thank you to our presenters as well. We now move on to the presentation of certificates to members registered as international professional engineers. To present this segment of awards, I'd like to invite engineer Dr. Kamal Laksiri, president of IESL for 2022-2023, accompanied by engineer P.W. Sarath, vice president IESL for 2021-2022. As our award presenters join us up, let me introduce to you now the title of International Professional Engineers. With IESL gaining full membership of the International Professional Engineers Agreement, formerly known as Engineers Mobility Forum, a new category of engineers called International Professional Engineers has been introduced. These engineers will have cross-border mobility as the professional qualifications of these engineers will be recognized in other member countries of the International Professional Engineers Agreement. So with that, we are now ready to recognize our international professional engineers, starting with engineer Dr. Tissa Leonage. Let's put our hands together, ladies and gentlemen. These are our international professional engineers. Joining us up next will be engineer S. Sachitanandam. Right after this, we have engineer DMLU Bandara. Joining next, engineer SAPC Sirivardana. Up next, Engineer AMCA Abenayaka. Joining after that, we have Engineer HAPKD Henika Arachi. Joining next, we have Engineer WAR Anura Priyanta. We will then have Engineer S. Selva Chandran. International Professional Engineers, we continue with the list after that. We have Engineer R. B. M. Gunawardana joining us up next. Let's put our hands together, ladies and gentlemen. Next, we have engineer TDB Veerasinghe, represented by his father today, Dr. A. Veerasinghe. Let's put our hands together for engineer TDB Veerasinghe. Joining next, engineer S.J. Paulus. Our next international professional engineer is engineer R.T. Nagahavatta. Joining right next, Engineer A.M. Rifnaz. Up next, after that, we will have Engineer S.P.N.D. Senarath. Our next international professional engineer is Engineer B.I. Pereira. Joining right after this, we will then have Engineer ZTM Fuzzly. Our next international professional engineer is Engineer A.W. Gamage.
Joining next, we will have Engineer R M S K Senaratna. International professional engineer, the next person on the list, Engineer K A B Patiratna. Joining up next, Engineer V Sutahar. Our next recipient will be Engineer P C Palayangoda. Joining next after that, we will then have Engineer W D H Ananda. Next up, Engineer T N Nishanta. Engineer S. V. Herath. Engineer R. M. S. D. Bandara. Engineer C. R. Edirimuni. Engineer T. N. Kankanamge. Do we have Engineer GPR Chandima with us? All right. On that note, we have now come to the end of this list of international professional engineers. Thank you very much to our presenters. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, let's put our hands together for all of the international professional engineers recognized in our midst today. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time now to honor some very special young achievers in our midst. Hopefully, these young achievers will also go on to be future engineers one day. These talented students, ladies and gentlemen, are some of the deserving winners of last year's Junior Inventor of the Year competition, a competition that the institution conducts annually to promote new thinking among our bright school goers. Now, before we announce the category winners for you, let's take a look at this special video highlighting our young achievers at the Junior Inventor of the Year 2021. Take a look.
Well, there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. Let's put our hands together for our junior inventors of the year highlighted right there on screen. We, of course, have the category winners with us here today in the hall. And we would like to felicitate them in a very special way to present these awards for the junior inventor of the year competition. I'd like to invite engineer Dr. Kamal Laksuri, president IESL for 2022-2023, accompanied by engineer Neil Abey Sekra, CEO at IESL. Let's put our hands together for the award presenters, ladies and gentlemen. And on that note, we are now ready to announce the winners of the various categories in the Junior Inventor of the Year competition for 2021. Hopefully, some of these are future IESL members, but nevertheless, they are all our brightest young minds in the country. So we need to make sure we encourage them with a loud round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. So joining us up next, we have the category winner for the most energy conservation invention. And this award goes to... O-N-T Deshan. Let's put our hands together for him. Congratulations, O-N-T Deshan, who is the category winner for the most energy conservation invention. That's the first category here. We move on to the next category after this. The next category is invention to ensure personal safety and foolproof operations. And we have two winners in this category. It's jo uh, jointly received by Suren Kumar Harishman and Jagadishwaran Judisram. Let's put our hands together for them. Congratulations. This is the category of invention to ensure personal safety and foolproof operations. So congratulations to the award winners. Our next category is, oh yes, we do have two of them. So of course we welcome both of them to join us up. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, let's put a hand together for Suren Kumar Harishman and Jagati Swaran Judisram. Our next category is for the invention of best efficiency improvement. And the winner in this category is G.N. Gamampilla. Let's put our hands together for him. Congratulations, G.N. Gamampilla. Category winner for invention of best efficiency improvement. Well, we now have... Some talented young girls joining us up. Next up, we have the category for Best Invention of Environment Conservation. And the winner is WFRN Pereira. Put your hands together, ladies and gentlemen, for her. This is the category of Best Invention of Environment Conservation. We have WFRN Pereira joining us up on stage. With that, we move on to the next category, Best Invention Made of Indi Indigenous Raw Material. And the award winner is DSW Ranatunga. Congratulations. This category is Best Invention Made of Indigenous Raw Material. And right now we have the category winner joining us, DSW Ranatunga. Congratulations to you. We have the final category coming up next, ladies and gentlemen. This is the category for Best Invention of Electronic Based Automation. And the winner is PSS De Silva. Put your hands together for her. That is Best Invention of Electronic Based Automation. Congratulations to PSS De Silva once again. With that, we come to the end of this segment of awards. Thank you very much to our award presenters. And once again, ladies and gentlemen, can we hear a huge round of applause for our junior inventors? Congratulations to each and every one of you. We're now moving into the presentation of a few special awards. Before I tell you what the awards are, to present this segment, I'd like to invite Engineer KPIU Dharmapala, Immediate Past President IESL for 2021-2022, accompanied by Engineer Neil Abesekra, Chief Executive Officer at IESL. Let's put our hands together for the award presenters, ladies and gentlemen. We're now about to move into a segment where we will be presenting awards for the EOE Pereira Award, the IESL Award, and we also have the SD and CC Award. So let's get started with EOE Pereira Award for 2020-2021. 
the EOE Pereira Award for the best paper presented at the annual sessions 2020 by a member. This is for the paper titled An Empirical Study of Dispute Resolution in a Road Construction Industry in Sri Lanka. The paper was presented by Engineer KPNS Nimalasena, Engineer Professor R. U. Halwatara and Mrs. A. Peramunu Gamage. And joining us today, we have Engineer KPNS Nimalasena and Eng Engineer Professor R.U. Halwatara. We invite them to join us up as we now put our hands together, ladies and gentlemen, for the award recipients of EOE Pereira Award. Congratulations. This, this is Engineer KPNS Nimalasena and Engineer Professor R.U. Halwatara. EOE Pereira Award 2020-2021. We now move on. IESL Award 2020-2021. The IESL Award for the best paper by a corporate member published in the Engineer Journal during the sessions 2020-2021. This is for the paper titled Climate Variation and Hydropower Generation in Samanalaveva Hydropower Scheme, Sri Lanka. The paper was authored by Ms. Jishani Dabre, Engineer G. R. M. B. Gunatilaka, Engineer Dr. Namdika, Engineer Dr. Kamal Laksiri, and Engineer Dr. Ratnayaka. So, being a corporate member, the IESL Award 2021 is presented to Engineer Dr. Kamal Laksiri. Let's put our hands together, ladies and gentlemen, as we invite Engineer Dr. Kamal Laksiri to now accept the IESL Award 2021. Once again, this is the IESL Award 2021. Let's put our hands together for Engineer Dr. Kamal Laksiri. Congratulations. We now have the IESL Award for Best Paper by a Corporate Member published in the Engineer Journal during the sessions 2021-2022. The paper is titled Comparative Study of Wind Codes, an Application to 46 Storied Wall Frame Structure. This paper is authored by Engineer B. Kiriparan, Engineer Dr. J. A. S. C. Jayasinghe, and Engineer Dr. U. I. Disanayaka. Being corporate members, the IESL Award 2022 is presented to Engineer B. Kiriparan and Engineer Dr. U. I. Disanayaka. Let's put our hands together, ladies and gentlemen, as we recognize them as recipients of the IESL Award 2022. Congratulations to Engineer B. Kiriparan and Engineer Dr. U. I. Disanayaka. This is the IESL Award 2022. We now move on, ladies and gentlemen, to the SD and CC Award. The SD and CC Award for Best Paper by an Associate Member Under 35 Years published in the Engineer Journal during the session 2021-2022. The paper is titled Novel Feature Extraction Algorithm for Classification of Multiple Occurrence of Flight Calls. The paper is authored by Engineer D.N. Egodage and Engineer Dr. S.J. Surya Arachi. Being an associate member under 35 years, the SD and CC Award 2022 is presented to Engineer D.N. Egodage. Let's put our hands together for Engineer D.N. Egodage. Recipient of the SD and CC Award 2022 as an associate member of IESL under 35 years. Congratulations to you. And on that note, thank you very much to our award presenters as well. Well, with that, ladies and gentlemen, we've come to the end of the presentation of the special awards right here. So we are ready now to move into the next item on our agenda. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time now for us to honor the immediate past president of IESL for 2021-2022, Engineer KPIU Dharmapala, as we appreciate his services to the institution in his, in his year as leader, in, of leadership. Please allow me now to officially introduce our immediate past president to you. Engineer KPIU Dharmapala graduated with a BSc Engineering degree from the University of Peradeniya in 1978. 
He holds a diploma in commercial arbitration obtained from the Institute for the Development of Commercial Law and Practice in 2012. He commenced his career in 1978 as a civil engineer at the River Valleys Development Board and served as a construction engineer, designs engineer and senior project manager. He is currently CEO Director of the Design Division of the Walker's CML Group. He was elected as a member of IESL in 1983 and a Fellow in 2001. He is also a Fellow of the Institution of Civil Engineers London and Institution of Engineers Australia. Engineer Dharmapala has also been a member of the Professional Review Examination Panels at the Institution of Civil Engineers London. Since 2008, he functions as an executive committee member of the Sri Lanka Association of Institution of Civil Engineers UK and currently he is the chairman of this association as well. Engineer Dharmapala is the current president of the American Society of Civil Engineers Sri Lanka section. He is one of the representative members of IESL in the Engineering Council of Sri Lanka. He served as president of IESL for the session 2020-2021 and he is the immediate past president for this session. Ladies and gentlemen, to honor our immediate past president now, we will witness the awarding of the immediate past president's medallion to engineer KPIU Dharmapala. We invite engineer KPIU Dharmapala to please join us as we now also invite engineer Dr. Kamal Laksari to now present the immediate past president's medallion to the immediate past president, engineer KPRU Dharmapala. Ladies and gentlemen, in appreciation of his distinguished service, and recognition of his significant contribution to IESL, we would now like to present the immediate past president's medallion to engineer KPIU Dharmapala. Let's put our hands together for him, ladies and gentlemen, as he thank him for his distinguished service towards IESL. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, this morning we will also be witnessing the induction of engineer Dr. Kamal Laksari as the president of IESL for the session 2022-2023. Allow me now to officially introduce our new president to you. Engineer Dr. Kamal Laksari graduated with a BSc Engineering Honours degree from the University of Moratua. He followed a master's degree specializing in hydropower development at the Norwegian University of Science and Technology in Norway. Later, he read for his PhD attached to Saga University, Japan. He joined the Ceylon Electricity Board or the CEB in 1991. Since then, he has continued in CEB specializing in hydropower and dam engineering for almost three decades. During this period, he has been engaged in various capacities in most of the major hydropower projects implemented in the country. He currently holds the post of Project Director of Broadlands Hydropower Project, a national power project commissioned recently. He is the immediate past chairman of the Sri Lanka Association of the Institution of Civil Engineers, UK. He is a past president of the Association of Consulting Engineers Sri Lanka, the national chapter of FIDIC or the International Federation of Consulting Engineers in Sri Lanka. This year, he was elected as a governor of the American Society of Civil Engineers for the session from 2021 to 2024. American Society of Civil Engineers is one of the oldest and most prestigious engineering institutions in the world where he is a fellow member. Engineer Dr. Kamal Laksari is also Vice President of the Sri Lanka National Committee on Large Dams of the International Commission on Large Dams and has attended a number of international events representing Sri Lanka. He has served as Vice President of IESL in three previous sessions. He has also served as the Chairman of the Water Forum of IESL. 
Ladies and gentlemen, this is our new president of IESL engineer, Dr. Kamal Laksari. We warmly welcome him to join us up as we now officially induct him. To officially induct the new president, I'd also like to invite immediate past president of IESL for the session 2021-2022, engineer KPIU Dharmapala to now join us in Do the Honours. Ladies and gentlemen, here we have our new president, Engineer Dr. Kamal Laksari, the president of IESL for 2022-2023. He will now be officially inducted by the immediate past president of IESL 2021-2022, Engineer KPIU Dharmapala. And as we now officially present to him his medallion, ladies and gentlemen, can we please put our hands together for Engineer Dr. Kamal Laksari, president of IESL 2022 2023. As he now officially assumes office, ladies and gentlemen, it's now our privilege to hear from our newly elected president of IESL. Ladies and gentlemen, with your applause, please welcome to the lectern, Engineer Dr. Kamal Laksari. morning to all of you again and uh, let me talk to you again this time with a garland for the formal shake chief guest India professor Malik Ranasinghe chairman information and communication technology agency guest of honor mrs. Reynuka M. Virakon director general board of investment of Sri Lanka keynote speaker dr. Sanjay Viravarna founder chairman and CEO WSO to group, other members of the head table, distinguished delegates uh, joining online from our regional bodies, chairman of the Engineering Council of Sri Lanka, past president Engineer Tilak Disilla, past presidents, members of the council, chapter chairmen who are coming from our uh, northern chapter and the uh, north central chapter, award winners, teachers, parents. Engineer Neil Abhi, Engineer Neil Abhi Gunadana, Chief Executive Officer, sorry, Neil Abhi Sekar, and the Chief Executive Officer and the staff of the IESL, ladies and gentlemen. I am really happy and honored to address this August audience today as the 117th President of the IESL, the apex body in engineering in the country. Today is an important day in my professional life as an engineer reaching the highest position in our prestigious institution. Having worked one year as an active president, <laughs> I still am trying to feel it. <laughs> it marks the reach of the peak of a 34 years long my journey with the institution since joining in 1988 as a student member. It is indeed a great honor and a rare privilege to be the president of the Institution of Engineers Sri Lanka the premier engineering professional body of the country, which has been in uninterrupted existence for 116 years, currently having a membership of almost 25,000, which, which includes 6,000 chartered engineers residing and working throughout the country and in many parts of the globe. I wish to take this opportunity to thank all our members for having confidence in me by electing me to this prestigious position. The mandate given to me to serve as the President of the Institution of Engineers Sri Lanka is the highest honor bestowed on me by our membership. I am also fully aware of the gravity of the responsibility that I am going to shoulder as the President of the Institution of Engineers Sri Lanka. I am taking up this responsibility in a time the nation is passing through a turbulent zone, in a time the institution is facing challenges, in a time our profession is facing challenges. Nevertheless, I assure you that with the potential I have built up from my three decades of service in the active state sector, preceded by a three years of dynamic private sector experience, I will serve as the servant lead of the institution in the coming session. I will do my utmost to live up to your expectation in reaching our common goals of uplifting the engineering profession in the country. 
and also to be the amongst the leading professional institution in the engineering and technology in the world and finally to contribute to the sustainable economic and social development of the country. On this important day, I am being elevated to the highest position in the engineering profession. I wish to thank everyone very much who helped me in this long journey. It is a, it's of course a long list to mention from my parents, my wife Geetani, my brothers, sisters, my school and university teachers, mentors, senior engineers, past presidents of the institution, fellow engineers, friends and colleagues who supported and guided me. I apologize for not recognizing them individually. But particularly, I wish to mention and thank two of my teachers individually who prompted me to join the council of the institution. That is past president Vidya Jyoti, Professor Dayanta Vijay Sekhar and Professor Lakshman Ratnayaka. So you are here today, but Professor Dayanta Vijay Sekhar uh, was a regular participant of our annual session. He's uh, not attending due to his poor health conditions. It is because of them only I could reach this position in ISL today. Now let me mention briefly about my alma mater. I did my primary education in a village school near my home in Matra up to grade 5. And then from there I happened to move to Kingswood College Candy. It was a totally an unplanned move, un unexpectedly decided when my father's sister suggested me to pursue my studies in Candy. By that time, my parents were preparing to send me to Rahul College Matra the leading boys, boys school in Matra. However, after the discussion between the <laughs> parents and my aunt, finally, with the blessings of all, I entered Kingswood College Candy in 1975 and continued there until the university entrance. Then again, I happened to make a similar turn at the end of 1983 in deciding my university entrance. But of course, that it was an intended and planned move. I got selected to the University of Moratua instead of University of Peradine, which was a few kilometers away from where I was living in Kandy. Having co completed my university studies, I graduated in 1990, three years behind our uh, scheduled generation due to the social unrest situation prevailed in the country at that time. However, this three years period gave me an opportunity to serve in the private sector. My desire to serve in the industry full time caused me to skip a great opportunity in becoming an academic. Let me recall the instance, past president, Professor Lakshman Ratnayaka, sir, you are here. I hope you remember it. Just after my graduation, I was offered to join the staff of the traffic engineering sub-department of our university by the then head of the department, Professor Lakshman Ratnayaka. It was an offer coupled with the opportunity to pursue postgraduate studies in Calgary University, Canada. He, sin he insisted me and I was in a dilemma in deciding on my teacher's request. But my great desire to join the industry pushed me to skip that opportunity. As a young engineer, I had a keen interest in specializing in the hydropower engineering sector and wanted to join an organization relevant to it. As my second choice, second interest, I had the railway engineering sector in my mind in the event if I could not secure in the first choice. I believe the second choice could have been influenced by my childhood hobby, model trains, which I practice to date. I recall the instance where when I appeared in the interviews for the government recruitments. Uh, those days, that is during the President Ranasinghe Premadasa's era, there we engineers had to sit for an examination and to face an interview for those who are to be recruited for the government sector. I too applied and in, and, and in the interview, I indicated my preferred workplaces as CB under the boats and corporation, corporations category and CGR, Ceylon Government Railway <laughs> under the department get, category as my first choices. The whole interview panel started to laugh and said, you are the only candidate who requested CGR as the first choice. No insult to CGR, I think that was because of the situation prevailed at that time in the country. Finally, I got selected to CEB and joined CEB in 1991, and I have been working there to date. 
My journey with CEB, now having completed little more than three decades, gave me a great opportunity to amply fulfill my desire to practice in the hydropower sector. During this time span, I have been able to fully engage in three national power plants built in the country and also to involve partially in all other national hydropower plants implemented in the country during the last three decades. During this period, I could also pursue my postgraduate studies relevant to the field of my specialty. I did my master's in Norway, that is the country of hydropower. Also, it gave me the opportunity to interact with leading international and local professionals, veterans in the hydropower field, and also to attend many international hydropower related events representing the country, which I consider as a great opportunity to, I got as a practicing engineer and I am proud of it. Now let me talk about some general facts about our, uh, as engineers, our role in the, with the professional bodies. Our learning of engineering does not stop with our academic studies. We need to continuously engage in updating our knowledge to become successful engineers with the fast developing technology. Engineering knowledge today has a very short life and lifelong learning is needed to keep our knowledge and skills up to date. I always believe and treat professional bodies like IESL as our lifetime partners in the continuous professional development process. Therefore, our affiliation as engineers to professional bodies is mandatory if we are to be successful as engineers. On the other hand, professional bodies have a greater responsibility in working towards continuous professional development of the members and acting to uplift the standard and quality of the engineers. For we Sri Lankan engineers, ISL is the, our lifetime partner with respect to our continuous professional development. Ladies and gentlemen, ISL since its formation in 1906 has been a success in many fronts. It is a shining example of how a professional institution can adapt to the times and demands of a constantly changing world. ISL has built strong links to the industry and government and policy making institutions. Over the years, many corporate members of ISL have moved on to become entrepreneurs and assume leadership positions in government and private sector. All these have been possible due to the prompt actions of our past presidents, respective councils and members who have taken progressive steps in bringing Sri Lankan engineering profession and practice to the level where we are today. Now why I consider it is my turn to drive the institution in this path of success followed to date. Now let me mention about my the areas I in, intend to focus in the coming session. Firstly, I strongly believe that <coughs> we engineers have a very important role to play in this development of our country. It is our duty as engineers to drive the country to reach the economic and social development goals that every Sri Lankan is dreaming about and also to steer the development in the correct path. In, a, in order to do that, ISL as the leading representative body of engineers has an enormous responsibility to shoulder. Further, we need to be the forerunner of the country's forward march with the huge potential we have with our elite membership. In my opinion, currently we are wasting that huge potential of engineers while the country and the people are suffering. As a means of utilizing this potential, I intend to make ISL to be a key player at the national policy making level. Secondly, it's, it's apparent that the only means of finding solutions to many of the challenges faced today are through science and technology applied with innovations and inventions and the responsibility of driving it falls on the shoulders of engineers. However, Though there are several avenues for initiating innovations and inventions, there is no proper established mechanism in place to encourage and guide such innovation to meet a successful end. We need to drive innovations up to the stage of producing the final commercially viable finished product stage and also turning such investors, innovators into entrepreneurs. There are many of our members who are successful entrepreneurs and a lot of young engineers who are having startups and trying to grow. As ISL, we shall facilitate the potential entrepreneurs to grow. In our techno exhibition, we allocate space for startups 
it has been a great opportunity for them to link up with investors, potential customers, and the general public at large. We need a coordinated mechanism to guide the community of entrepreneurs further and to link to the industry. As ISL, I believe we need to work further on this regard. Thirdly, as observed currently, it's still a considerable proportion of our engineers, particularly those who serve in the private sector, are not associated with ISL, while some of them hold our membership. I intend to attack, attract all of them back to the institution in an active role. The huge potential they possess can be an added strength to us. I go by the principle that all engineering practi practitioners in this country should be under one, bum, uh, one umbrella and should act in one voice. I also intend to implement measures to unite engineering practitioners in the country under the umbrella of IESL. Regulation of the engineering practice in Sri Lanka, as we are all aware, with the establishment of the Engineering Council of Sri Lanka in 2017, our, our, our profession is protected. This is a major achievement we have achieved after 30 years of struggling. However, still there are many actions to implement in making the regulation process fully effective. I intend to closely work with ECS, with the ECSL, Engineering Council of Sri Lanka, and to support in strengthening the process and securing the status of the profession. Next, improve the quality and standards of the professional review process and promote young members to become corporate members of the institution, nurturing them to improve their technical competencies, professional skills, values, and ethics. Also need to encourage eligible chartered engineers to become fellows and international professional engineers. Currently, we are a full signatory to the Washington Accord, which is a kind of international recognition we have achieved. We have also received the provisional status of the Sydney Accord and expect to receive the full sig signatory status soon. With these achievements, IESL will be in a strong position as the sole body responsible for regulating and maintaining engineering education standards in the country. However, there are also challenges to be faced in the practice. I intend to closely work with the University Grants Commission, the higher education authorities to work on the issues and to ensure practicing of the accords effectively. Enhancing the connection with the members in the provinces and overseas chapter. We have a great network of uh, overseas and local chapters. Currently, we represent a large engineering community spread throughout the country and abroad. We have a widespread network of provincial and foreign chapters linking all our members. However, we need to enhance the link with our chapters and need to get our members in provinces closely associated with the institutions affairs. Particularly, I consider our foreign chapters as an untapped potential with respect to their knowledge and experience. We have a huge community of elite engineers living abroad and with the possibility of linking them through the chapters. I intend to enhance the link with our foreign chapters and also to expand the network of several other countries. Again, I intend to bring all Sri Lankan engineers living around the globe under our umbrella. Our members, members of ISL and other stakeholders expect a very high level performance and improved member service from ISL. We need to improve our internal processes at ISL and to strengthen the secretariat, improve physical facilities in ISL headquarters and establish quality systems. We also need serious physical improvements to the headquarters and also to assist in building our provincial chapters. Lastly, but not least, we ISL need to establish and have enhanced relationship with all other professional bodies. It is my strong belief that the fate of this country is lying in the hands of we professionals and not on the politicians as commonly believed. It is enough we wasted time pointing fingers at politicians. It is a timely need of we all professionals to get united and work in a common understanding for the betterment of the country and the people. The professional bodies of all professions can be the platform and I intend to drive ISL to 
take a lead role in this mammoth task. So these are the main areas I intend to focus in the coming session. I, I am confident that all these can be made a reality with the support of all of you while serving as a servant lead of the institution. With that, let me conclude my speech and thank you very much. Thank you very much to engineer Dr. Kamal Laksuri for your inaugural address as president and also for unveiling your plans to propel this institution forward. We wish you as well as your committee the very best for a term of great success and growth to follow. Ladies and gentlemen, it's now time for us to offer our gratitude to the distinguished guests in our midst as we thank them for gracing our occasion here this morning. On behalf of the Institution of Engineers Sri Lanka, we would now like to present our distinguished guests with a special token of appreciation each. To now do the honors of presenting these tokens of appreciation to our guests, may I invite Engineer Dr. Kamal Laksuri, President IESL for the session 2022-2023. And we'd also like to invite Engineer Professor Chandana Gamage, Honorary Treasurer IESL 2021-2022. Let's put our hands together for our, award, our token of presenters. We'd first like to present a token of appreciation to our keynote speaker, Dr. Sanjeeva Viravarna, who is the founder and CEO of WSO2. We invite our keynote speaker to please join us right here as we now have a token of appreciation coming your way on behalf of the Institution of Engineers Sri Lanka. Ladies and gentlemen, let's put our hands together for our keynote speaker, Dr. Sanjeeva Viravarna, founder, CEO of WSO2. Thank you very much for gracing our occasion here this morning. Our next token of appreciation is for our guest of honor, Mrs. Renuka Virakon, Director General of the Board of Investment of Sri Lanka. We warmly welcome our guest of honor to join us right here as we now have a token of appreciation coming your way on behalf of the Institution of Engineers of Sri Lanka. Ladies and gentlemen, this is our guest of honor here, Mrs. Renuka Virakon. Let's put our hands together as we appreciate her presence with us here this morning at our annual sessions. Mrs. Renuka Virakon, Director General of the Board of Investment of Sri Lanka. Thank you for being with us, ma'am. On that note, I'd like to say thank you very much to Engineer Professor Chandana Gamage. We'd invite Engineer uh, Dr. Kamal Laksuri to stay. And we'd now like to invite Engineer Professor Udayanga Hemapala, Honorary Secretary, IESL. 2021-2022 to please join us now. We'd like to now present a token of appreciation to our chief guest, Engineer Professor Malik Rana Singha. He is Senior Professor in Civil Engineering at the University of Moratua, as well as Chairman of the Information and Communication Technology Agency. We'd like to warmly offer our gratitude to our chief guest for gracing our annual sessions here this morning. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Engineer Professor Malik Rana Singha. Let's put our hands together as we thank our our chief guests for being with us here at our annual sessions today. Thank you very much to our chief guest and of course to all of our distinguished guests who've joined us here at our 116th annual sessions of IESL. On that note, ladies and gentlemen, we're almost drawing close to the end of our formal proceedings. But before we wrap up, we have to remember to thank all of the many individuals who've contributed in making this a noteworthy event. To sum up our appreciation in the vote of thanks, we will have the official vote of thanks delivered by the President-elect of IESL for 2022-2023, Engineer Professor Ranjit Disanayaka. I'd like to officially introduce him to you before he joins us up. Professor Disanayaka is a senior professor in civil engineering at the University of Peradeniya, Sri Lanka. He has been a Fulbright Scholar, Columbia University, USA in 2008. Endeavour Fellow, Monash University, Australia in 2008, and a Japan Student Services Organization, or JASO Research Fellow, Ehime University, Japan in 2007. Professor Disanayaka was awarded the Young Scientist Award in 2007 for excellence in scientific research by the National Science and Technology Commission of Sri Lanka. He also received the Overseas Prize of the Institution of Civil Engineers London, UK in 2007 for a paper he published. Additionally, he was also awarded the Australia Alumni Excellence Award in 2012. 
Professor Disanayake has published over 100 journal papers and chaired 15 international conferences. He's a fellow member of the IESL. Currently, he is the chairman of the Green Building Council of Sri Lanka, vice president of the Chamber of Construction Industries, and the chairman and founder of LEGO, ICB, Lanka, AAC, and GAP Private Limited. He's also the president of Engineers Without Borders in Sri Lanka. Ladies and gentlemen, to now officially deliver the vote of thanks, please welcome President-elect of IESL for 2022-2023, Engineer Professor Ranjit Bisanayaka. Good afternoon, all of you. President of the Institution of Engineers, Sri Lanka, our most valued invited guest, ladies and gentlemen. It is my privilege to have been asked to propose a vote of thanks on this special occasion. Annual session of IESL marked the beginning of a new session. It also symbolized the official handing over the medal of presidency to the incoming president for the session 2022-2023. I, on behalf of IESL, would like to extend our deepest gratitude to our chief guest, Engineer Professor Malik Ranasinghe, Senior Professor, University of Marathu, Chairman Information and Communication Technology Agency for accepting our invitation and gracing it this important occasion. I too agree with your thoughts on engineers' role as well as ISL role in standardization. I must mention that our deep sense of appreciation to our guest of honor, Mrs. Renuka Virakon, Director General of BOI. A big thank for to Dr. Sanjeeva Vira Varana. Our keynote speaker, founder and CEO of the WSO2, for your inspiring speech. I was moved by it and uh, I believe the same goes to those who are listening to your speech. And I believe that the, your concept as well as your thought on engineers' role in developing of this country. The highlight of today's event, Dr. Kamal Laksiri, the newly elected president of IESL. Our eyes are on you, sir. Until the completion of the session, as you know that the, the country is in the difficult situation. And we believe that the engineer has a big role to play. As keynote speaker very correctly pointed out. As the president-elect for the session 2022-2023, I pledge my full support to you. Past President of the ESL, Sirs, Madam, this institute would not have been here. It is now without your wisdom and guidance. I thank you for the service rendered to the institute and uh, I wish you a good health. The ESL Council is a governing body of the institute. Outgoing members of the council, I would like to make this moment to appreciate your initiation and the programs launched during the previous session, not only for the benefit of the engineers, but also the country. Members of ISL, you are the strength for the institute. We really appreciate your commitment toward the institute. Further, we are grateful uh, today, our compere, Ms. Prisma, I remember that you were here last time too. You bring the energy to the session. I would like to express our sincere thanks to media team for their wonderful job. As well as I would like to thanks to the BMIS, uh, BMIS uh, CHR staff for the making all the arrangements successful. I see more and more school children are receiving the award. This is a hard work to bring them to up to this level. The sections of 
JIY and the UIY is continuously working hard to bring these talented young school children to the state. I really would like to give a big thank to the chairman and the executive committee of the JYS and UIY for doing the hard work. Finally, I would like to take this opportunity to place the record of heartiest thanks to CEO of the IESL and the Deputy Executive Secretary and the staff of the IESL. You are the pillar behind this uh, successful event and the, everything went smoothly but you have put a lot of hard work into the, this action. I may not be able to thank everybody who is all in this uh, session arrangement and bringing up the during whole last year. But finally, I would like to say thank you for everyone. Thank you. I wish you have a wonderful weekend. Thank you very much to Engineer Professor Ranjit Disanayaka for those very warm words of gratitude expressed to everybody involved in making today a very significant morning indeed. With that, ladies and gentlemen, we now draw the curtains on the 116th annual sessions of the Institution of Engineers Sri Lanka. We trust that this morning has been extremely insightful and interesting for all of you as we've learned from our distinguished guests and fellow members, as well as celebrated the accolades of our engineering peers. Well, as we wrap up, it's our pleasure to invite all of you to join us for refreshments and fellowship in the lobby. But before that, ladies and gentlemen, Gentlemen, as we now come to the end of our formal proceedings, may I request you all to please remain seated as we will now have our dignitaries leaving the hall. As our dignitaries leave the hall right now, ladies and gentlemen, on that note, once again, I invite all of you to join us shortly for refreshments and lobby uh, and uh, uh, fellowship, which is arranged in the lobby right outside. And on that note, once again, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for your presence here this morning and please enjoy the rest of your day. Have a nice day.